Hey guys, today's video is all about how to effectively coach your youth soccer team to do throw-ins. So let's go. The last couple of videos that I've done have been on pattern choreography and how you use that to build out of the back or to attack to goal. Well, you can also use pattern choreography when it comes to throw-ins and corners. And while I usually in my sessions do pattern choreography, building out of the back or attacking, once in a while, I will throw in some pattern choreography for throw-ins or corners. And today we're gonna to talk about how you do that for throw-ins. For all my throw-ins, the fullback who's on the side that the ball went out is the person who throws the ball in. Similar to the other pattern choreography sessions that I run, we start with cones in the positions that the players should be. The center back on the side of the throw supports behind. The opposite center back lines up here as shown to get ready for a switch. Our center midfielder is the option centrally. The striker is the option further up the field. And lastly, the fullback on the opposite side cinches in slightly as shown here, but is again getting ready for a switch. Once your players become comfortable with their positions, you don't have to use the cones, but just like with the other pattern choreography sessions, you're gonna wanna start with cones, especially if they're a young team or if you're just starting with a brand new team. The players line up by their cones, and as before, I like to put up some physical barrier. So that can be accomplished with mannequins or training sticks. With the other pattern choreography sessions that I run, I have pattern number one, pattern number two, with throw-ins, I do this a little bit differently. Um, I'm not really sure why I do that, but I call it option one or first look, option two or second look, and then option three uh, or third look. And I think I do this mainly because throw-ins, we want to encourage them to play that very quickly. So I don't really want it to be methodical. I want them to pick the ball up, look first, look second, look third. Option number one or first look is a ball played to the striker in a dangerous position. Now you have to be careful here because this can oftentimes turn into your fullback just throwing the ball to the striker every single time as fast as possible and that's not what we want. This is the first option, the first look, because it's dangerous and if the striker's open we want to give them the ball. But you have to coach this very carefully and say look this might be closed, it might not be the best option. So we set the team up to run through option number one or first look. And again, if you have extra players here, guys, you can just sub them in to the different positions with each throw. In fact, I like to have a couple of guys doing the throw-ins because especially with a young team, they're still learning how to actually throw the ball in. A big coaching point on these throw-ins is the concept of losing your man. So with option number one or first look, we're trying to get the ball to the striker here. In order to do that, the striker's movement has to go in the opposite direction to draw the opponents away from the area we're trying to get into. So the initial movement of the striker and the center midfielder should look like this, where they're drawing their opponents away from where we're trying to go. And you can even coach the thrower to fake a throw as they're making their initial move. Once the striker has made his initial move in option one or first look, he takes the ball to goal and is supported by the center midfielder and the fullback on the opposite side. Option number one or first look is then repeated. And as your players get more comfortable with this particular option, you're gonna to wanna to increase the game speed and the intensity. Option number two is a throw into our center midfielder. And it starts the same way with the striker and the center midfielder losing their man and taking their opponents away from where we want the ball to go. The ball is then thrown into our center midfielder's feet, who is encouraged to attack, take players on, and find either the fullback on the opposite side or the striker. Option two or second look is then repeated with, again, trying to enforce intensity and game speed as they get more comfortable with these. Option three or third look is a switch. Now this is the option that I try to get my players to do most often. And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, they never cover the center back. Almost never, especially in the youth game, is there gonna be a player on your center back. Now, they might start doing this if you start doing option number three a lot and switching the field and getting yourself into good position. But for the most part, they stack everybody near the striker or the center midfielder. It's a real quick, first look, second look. If one of those is on, we play it, but we don't force it. Most of the time, we'll even I'll even teach my kids to fake like you're gonna go to the striker or fake like you're gonna go to the center midfielder. Because again, that just opens up the center back right away for the option. 
So it starts the same way with our center midfielder and our striker losing their man, but the ball gets played to the center back supporting that side. The ball is quickly switched through our center backs to the fullback on the opposite side. The fullback is encouraged to carry the ball down the wide area of the field looking for a cross. And just like in our attacking and finishing videos, striker goes near post, center mid goes to the penalty spot, and the fullback on the opposite side goes far post. This is then again repeated with the coaching points being quickly switching the ball between the center backs, losing your man with the center mid and the striker, and then making these dedicated runs that we always talk about into the box. Just like with the building out of the back and attacking pattern choreography, once you've gone through this for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're going to switch to a conditioned game. For the positional game, we take the mannequins away and add defenders. Here you can see I have a 6 versus 4 plus a goalkeeper. The amount of defenders that you add really depends on the skill of the team, with certainly the goal to be getting to even numbers. Play begins with a throw from our fullback, and the blue team is looking to go to the big goal. The red team, if they win the ball, goes to the two small pug goals we have here. Now, if the ball goes out or a goal is scored, play is reset right from the fullback throwing the ball in. I'll typically play to a certain number or for a certain amount of time, uh, switching the kids out so they each get an opportunity to be part of the throw-in team. So I hope that helped you guys understand how I teach my kids pattern choreography with throws. Uh, I also do this with corners, but like I said, when I'm doing the pattern choreography, I try to focus mostly on building out of the back and attacking patterns, but this is a really good way to teach kids how to throw the ball in and the patterns that you would do thereof.